Today's video from Sam for us now. We're taking a look at uh, how you can automatically sequence your end of day Z reports to include the Z1 Financial and the Z1 PLU with the press of just one button using the macro programming function. Um, it's a fairly long winded procedure and uh, there's two steps to it. The first thing to do is to make a macro button and then basically the way a macro button works is you can program a sequence of keystrokes and mode turns on the key lock into that button so when you press the button it automatically goes to the Z mode and runs off the necessary reports. So I'll show you how to program it and then I'll show you how to use it at the end and then it should make sense as to whether it's useful for your business and your till. Obviously the machine in front of me is from the NR500 series, in particular it's the NR510R which will have an identical keyboard to the 520R uh, the flat keyboard versions, the 510FB and 520FB, um, they'll look slightly different, and they'll, but the process is the same. The overall programming protocols are the same, so you can use what I do in this video um, and extrapolate it to those machines. Uh, so the first thing to do, let's make the macro button. Um, so you will need the metal key marked C, um, and then you'll need to turn it from register mode round to the service position, which is an unmarked position on the key lock. And then you're looking for line four, key assignment, cash to enter. And then what happens here is you press the subtotal button and it will print out a list of all the function keys you can possibly program onto the register. Um, so these are sample S machines, 500 series are quite flexible. Although they've got small keyboards, you can, you can set them up in many different ways. There's lots of different buttons you can both take off and put onto the keyboard in particular over in the function key area here. So there's 458 codes on there and we're looking for macro one, which is code 347. So we're gonna set up a button to be macro one. So we type in 347, because that's the button code, and then we press the button that we want it to be. So I'm choosing service check. You don't have to, you can pick another button, but that button is the one I want to program to be my automated end of day reporting button. Um, so that's step one. We've set up the macro button. Um, we press cache to save it, and you get a little printout saying key assignment, and then the previous function, so service, and the new function, which is now macro one. Um, so to set up the macro button, you turn the key round to PGM, arrow down to function key, cache to enter, and then you go to macro key, line two, cache to enter that, and then now you press the button. So I've made this one my macro button, so I press it. It comes up with a default description, so you can give it a more useful name. So I'll just call mine um, Z reports, so Z space, R E P O R T S cash to save and then now this is the crucial bit so you watch this video all the way through and then work out what um, what buttons or what sequences you want the button to perform because um, I've written mine down already um, so it's everything that will be included in running the Z report. So the first thing you do when you run a Z report is to turn the key to the Z mode. So literally turn the key to Z and the macro button will remember that you've done that. And then the sequence that I've written down, the button sequence is cache, 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 clear, clear. And then to do the PLU element of the report, because it's not included on the standard financial, you'd then press number three and then you would press cache, cache. That would run the report, and then you'd want to clear, clear, back to the main screen, and then you'd also want to ideally go back to the reg mode. So this is where it gets a bit funny. Um, so that's reg mode, so that's the end of the sequence. So when you've typed in all the keystrokes you want the button to perform, to save it, you enter the same macro key. So here, it doesn't particularly like it because I've turned the key to reg, so I need to go back to PGM, press it, and then you get a printout here saying macro one, and there are all the um, keystrokes. That's the name of it, Z reports, and then all the keystrokes. So it'll be interesting to see if that's worked because it hasn't put turn the key back to reg at the end. Um, so clear to get out of here, clear again, and then when you're back at the main program mode, 
and turn the key back to the reg position. We'll just put some sales through so I've got something to show on my reports if the button works. So what I'm expecting to happen is when I've got some sales in the till and I now press this button over here, I'm expecting that to run a Z financial report, a Z POU report and ideally return the till back to the register mode. So that's the Z1 financial, there's the Z POU and there's the key back to the register mode, so that's how to do it. So that's the whole idea of that is, well there's two reasons for it, it's making it automated so it's less likely that someone doesn't run the report so they might forget to run the Z POU report or the financial because you've got to run two to get both pieces of information. Um, they might do it wrong, they might go to the X mode and run the resetting version of it and also it's just saving you time. Okay, hope that video has been helpful. Uh, we've got plenty more videos showing you how to get the best out of the NR500 series of Sam Forest cash registers. Some of those videos will be appearing on screen now, so you're welcome to check those out. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel or visit samforesthelp.co.uk for more. Thanks for watching.